This new oat milk chai brown sugar something is so good. It literally tastes like apple chai. Like, I don't know how to describe it. It's the best thing I've had ever all day. I love it. drink was probably a bad idea because my fingers are about to fall off if they're so cold but the drink is really good but yeah not a good idea and then i'm holding these bugs and i need to get a basket and life is happening to me <laughs> Mission complete! I got some great books, guys, as always. But anyway, I feel great. It's a beautiful day. So I can't wait to show you the books that I got. So let's continue on with the day. We are back from a long day of shopping. Now I have Barnes & Noble here and I have Target over there. So this is a whole side note, but I stopped at Target on my way home from Barnes & Noble because I couldn't resist. And I ended up buying like a bunch of like winter slash holiday decor things because it's about to change into like Christmas season. And that's my favorite time of the year. I'm going to like redecorate my entire home in about a few hours after I finish discussing all the books that I got. But anyway, if you're interested in seeing me turn my home from fall to like holiday Christmas theme, then I will highly recommend you check out my other channel. I created another channel specifically for like my day-to-day -day living, like the random things that I do in my life. Exhibit A being stopping at Target when I know that I shouldn't be and buying a bunch of like winter slash Christmas holiday decor things. So if you're interested in seeing that come to life, then I highly recommend you subscribe to that new channel. The video is gonna be out very soon, but if you wanna make sure that you see the video and all the kind of things and subscribe and it's also gonna help support that channel so that would be really cool i'll leave the link to that channel in the description box below anyway back to barnes and noble the first book is like a new one this book literally just came out this month it is called check and mate by ali hazelwood Oh my god! If you know anything about Ali Hazelwood, she is the queen of like romance in a different kind of way. Like Ali Hazelwood wrote the book Love Theoretically. So if you've watched my 24 hour reading vlog, I literally was raving about that book. I gave that book five stars. This is her newest release, Check and Mates, and I've heard nothing, nothing short of great things about this book. It's a lot shorter than Love Theoretically, but I loved Love Theoretically. Like it was a good book. To be honest, I've only read Love Theoretically by Ali Hazelwood. I know she has other books like The Love Hypothesis and like Love on the Brain, something like that. So I was like, I need to read another one. So this is her latest novel. And so I, I had to read it, you know? I was like, oh my gosh, she wrote another one. And I love this cover. It's so cute. It's actually like glistening in this lighting, which is really cool. I was so when I read The Perfect Rivals to Lovers Romance. That sounds like my type of vibe. I love the enemies to lovers book trope. That's what I've discovered about myself. Let's talk about what this book is even about. You might be able to guess it's about chess. And I know literally nothing about chess. I tried to learn chess like once and I was so confused. I was like... Okay, checkers is easier. <laughs> Mallory Greenleaf is done. 
with chess. Every move counts nowadays. After the sport led to the destruction of her family four years earlier, Mallory's focus is on her mom, her sisters, and the dead-end job that keeps the lights on. That is, until she begrudgingly agrees to play in one last charity tournament and inadvertently wipes the board with notorious king killer Nolan Sawyer, a current world champion and reigning bad boy of chess. Okay, bad boy of chess. I love it already. Nolan's loss to an unknown rookie shocks everyone, especially Mallory. What's even more confusing? His desire to cross pawns again. Not cross paths, cross pawns. That's one thing I love about Allie Hazelwood. She knows how to use words in an unorthodox kind of way. He desires to cross pawns again. Girl, sign me up to see that. What kind of gambit is Nolan playing? The smart move would be to walk away, resign, game over. But Mallory's victory opens the door to sorely needed cash prizes and despite everything, she can't help feeling drawn to the enigmatic strategist. As she rockets up the ranks, Mallory struggles to keep her family safely separated from the game that wrecked it in the first place. And as her love for the sport she so desperately wanted to hate begins to rekindle, Mallory quickly realizes that the games aren't only on the board. It's not. The spotlight is hotter than she imagined and the competition can be fiercely attractive and intelligent and infuriating. And that's how the synopsis ends. Guys, something about the fact that like her being a chess player ruined her whole family so she stepped away from it. But then she got back to it and she wants to hate it but her love for it is rekindling. I love that because I feel like there's something about Ali Hazelwood's books even though it's about like chess it somehow is gonna be relatable to me. I already know. I already know. She has a way of making her writing very relatable to everybody even if you don't play chess. Like her last book that I read, Love Theoretically, it literally was about like a scientist and like STEM heavy and I am not a science teacher at all. I understand teaching in the profession. I really felt like that book was written for me. You need to go check out that reading vlog because I literally was like, did she write a book on my behalf? But anyway, she has a way of making it very relatable despite your common interests, you know? So I am so excited to have another book by her and I'm so excited to read it and see what it's like. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. My heart is happy with just this one book alone. I could have walked out of there with this book and been happy but then you know me the next set of books are just as good like watch this one so i got it i had to pick up because literally people told me get it you have to get it get it get it you should get it oh my god i finally got the second book of the aquatar series in my 24 hour reading vlog, I read the first book of the Aquatar series. It's like full circle. Like I'm back to another Ali Hazelwood book, which was not part of the plan. And I had the second book of the Aquatar series. And I literally read from both of these authors in that 24 hour reading vlog. What was that about? I'm telling you, I did not plan this. I just went to a Barnes and Noble and was like, let me see what I find. And then I found the gym, like right when I walked in. And I knew that I was gonna get this one. Literally so many of you guys left a comment and was like, you need to read the second book. The second one makes the first book make sense. The second book is so much better than the first book. But the second book, second book, get it, get it, get it, get it. So I got it. I wasn't the biggest fan of the first book of the Avatar series. Go watch that video and I'll stop talking about it from now on. <laughs> I didn't like some of the tropes that happened in that book and I think that's what got me. But I love fairy tale stuff. I love like other world type of stuff. Like those are my tropes, you know? Anyway, all that is to say is I was going to completely stop that series after I read the first one. And I even said it in that video. So I was like, okay, let me give it another chance. So here's the second book and it's a lot thicker <laughs> than the first one. But something about Sarah's writing is pretty unique as well in the fact that like she makes really digestible books you just like want to keep reading and keep reading and i love the lengths of her chapters this book has the potential of being read like pretty quickly because of how captivating and how great of a storyteller she is if you know anything about series you can't really talk about the second book because it's probably going to spoil the first book for you i won't really talk much about this book but i will link that video of my 24 hour reading vlog in the description box if you want to go see everything that i thought of the first book of this series what it's about and all the things i'll leave it below and also if you want to see what i thought about love theoretically from this author ali hazelwood it's all in the same video somehow because life is happening to me and that's great i'm kind of really excited to see what the hype is about with this one and if this book isn't good i'm done i'm done with you guys but if this book is good then i'm gonna be like you know what 
y'all were right and you have put me in my place so stay tuned for my wrap up for whenever i read this book i will definitely talk about it so let's move on the next book i got was powerless by lauren roberts dude okay let's talk about the back of this book it says Peyton thief ordinary survivor i've never been looked at like it's a privilege to be in my presence an honor to hold my gaze a gift to get a glimpse of me, not until I met him. Oh my God, those two sentences alone makes me want to dive into this book immediately. I've never been looked at like it's a privilege to be in my presence. Like honestly, same. I wanna be looked at like that, okay? It's like, come on guys, like where are you? <laughs> and then it says, Kai, Prince, Elite enforcer if i am to be her enemy i want it to be because she loathes herself for wanting me she is the very thing he has spent his whole life hunting he is the very thing she has spent her whole life pretending to be and fate ensured they will find each other but still what, what is this book about i have no idea it says hunted hunter destined for each other let me keep going. The elites have possessed powers for decades, gifted to them by the plague, while those born ordinary are just that, ordinary. Banished from the kingdom of Ilya and shunned from society. No one knows this better than Peyton Gray, an ordinary posing as a psychic to blend in with the elites so she's supposed to be banished, but she's trying to pretend like she's one of them. Girl, that is some tea. That is some tea. But when she unwittingly saves one of Ilya's princes, Kai Azur, she's thrown into the purging trials. A brutal competition showcasing the elite's powers. So she's thrown into a competition that's gonna showcase her powers. I'm sorry, her non-existent powers, because they don't exist. It says, if the trials and the opponents within them don't kill her, the prince she's fighting feelings for will if he discover what Peyton actually is. Completely ordinary. Do you want to read this book or what? Oh my god! I love the design on each chapter. Like, that is super, super creative. Another thing, as I'm flipping through this book, it looks like it goes back and forth between their perspectives. It says, Peyton. And then you flip, flip, flip. And then the next chapter, it says... Oh, Peyton again. <laughs> but wait, I'm pretty sure it goes back and forth between their perspectives. Let me see. Yep, and then it says Kai, right? We get to see what Peyton thinks, we get to see what Kai thinks. And I'm curious as to what they all think, honestly. So I'm super, super excited to read Powerless. Like, <gasps> this makes me so happy. Like, I'm such a, yeah. Okay, another book that I got. This is like a very, very different genre of books. This is a memoir. Now, this is a pretty popular person. You might know her. This one, Britney Spears, The Woman In Me. First of all, I love memoirs. It was like such an accident because I really just wanted to read Michelle Obama's Becoming book because it's Michelle Obama and it's like, why would I not read that, right? So when I read Michelle Obama's Becoming book, that's when I became obsessed with memoirs. And then the second memoir I read was like Educated by Tara Westover and I absolutely loved it. And I was like, I think I like memoirs. I do have Barack Obama's memoir as well, but I haven't read it. That book is like huge. But anyway, this memoir is pretty small, unlike Michelle Obama's and Barack Obama's, but that makes sense, you know, whatever. I love hearing other people's lives and their stories, especially people who or like everyone knows the way i view britney spears might not be the way you view britney spears but we all know britney spears and if you don't you probably do but you don't realize you do not everyone knows everyone but anyway whenever you read about a celebrity and like their lives it makes you look at life differently because you realize that these people are not perfect these people are just like you and i and in fact most of them started off with like less things than we have actually you know so it's really interesting and it's always super telling to hear their story the whole time when I was reading Educated, I kept having to remind myself that like, this happened in real life. This is her story. She did a great job of like telling it like a story, like you're just reading another like fiction novel. But no, like that actually happened to her. Like that was actually her life. And like, it makes you look at her and like everything differently because that was real. The same thing for Michelle Obama, like the way she grew up and then going through politics. And then you were alive when half of the stuff she was talking about was happening. And you're just like, oh my God, you just look at everything 
everything differently. That's one thing I love about memoirs. I'm going to challenge myself this year, especially in 2024 and on, to read several genres. I don't want to get stuck only reading fantasy because that's my vibe or science fiction. I do want to read more fiction or like historical fiction. I want to read even more self-help books just to see what's out there. I want to read more memoirs. Memoirs can kind of serve as a self-help book as well because you can see how they got through whatever they got through, how they are where they are from where they started. You know what I'm saying? As a little girl, I walked for hours alone in the silent woods behind my house in Louisiana. And that's when I was like, I need to read this book. I'm from Louisiana and I didn't even know that she like lived in Louisiana for a certain part of her life. Like I didn't know. And like, I'm not the biggest Britney Spears fans by any means. I probably couldn't name five songs for you. Like I'm not as big of a fan as I am to like Beyonce. You know what I'm saying? Like I couldn't name a lot of Britney Spears songs. I remember growing up and watching Britney Spears. Like I remember she went through this thing where she like shaved off all of her hair. I remember like certain things about Britney Spears, but like you might know more about her than I do. And she said, before going home, I will follow a path to our neighbor's house through a landscape yard and past a swimming pool. They had a rock garden full of small soft pebbles that would trap the heat and stay warm in a way that felt so good against my skin. I would lie down on those rocks and look up at the sky, feeling the warmth from below and above, thinking I can make my own way in life. I can make my dreams come true. That's inspiring, right? The Woman in Me is a brave, astonishingly moving story about freedom, fame, motherhood, survival, faith, and hope. In June 2021, the whole world was listening as Britney Spears spoke in open court. The impact of sharing her voice, her truth, was undeniable, and it changed the course of her life and the lives of countless others. The Woman in Me reveals for the first time her incredible journey and the strength at the core of one of the greatest performers in pop music history. Written with remarkable candor and humor, Spears' groundbreaking memoir illustrates, oh sorry, illuminates the enduring power of music and love and the importance of a woman telling her own story on her own terms at last. And look at this. Girl, it is just giving. It is just giving. I have no idea what I'm about to get myself into, but um, I'm excited. And I know Britney Spears used to date Justin Timberlake, right? Or am I making that up? Anyway, I cannot wait to get into this book. Like, I'm so happy that I'm reaching one of my goals, reading outside of my normal book genres. I'm reading outside of fantasy, so that's cool. Cool. So I cannot wait to get into this one. On the same track of reading different book genres, I also got another genre. This is like a historical fiction kind of novel. I'm trying to dabble into different book genres because I want to be like a well-rounded reader. I want to read a memoir. I want to read Black Cake. Now, I know that this is about to be like a Netflix, not Netflix, Hulu series. I know that it's on TV. I remember seeing like previews of it somewhere. But I've also heard one of my favorite booktubers, her name is Kalila, also talked about reading this book once in one of her videos. And she had like great things to say about it. I was on the fence. I was like, should I get it? Should I not? Like, I don't know. I don't know. It's not fantasy. Am I going to like it? I don't know. And I still don't know if I'm going to like it. So anyway, let's talk about what Black Cake is about. We can't choose what we inherit, but can we choose who we become? I love that. In present-day California, Eleanor Bennett's death leaves behind a puzzling inheritance for her two children, Byron and Benny, a traditional Caribbean black cake made from a family recipe with a long history and a voice recording. Already, I'm like, wait, what? It says, in her message, Eleanor shares a tumultuous story about a headstrong young swimmer who escapes her island home under suspicion of murder. <gasps> I don't remember reading that at Barnes & Noble. Like, murder? The heartbreaking tale Eleanor unfolds, the secret she still holds back, and the mystery of a long lost child challenge everything the siblings thought they knew about their identities and themselves. That's crazy. Can Byron and Benny reclaim their once close relationship, piece together Eleanor's true story, and fulfill her final request to share the black cake when the time is right? Will their mother's revelations bring them back together or leave them feeling more lost than ever? It sounds like they don't really know who their mom is. It sounds like their mom had a whole different life before them that involves murder. Girl, I must read this book, right? It says, Charmaine Wilkinson's debut novel is a story of how the inheritance of betrayals, secrets, memories, and even names 
can even names can shape relationships and history. Okay, I have a good idea what happened, but I don't wanna say anything in case I'm right. I don't wanna spoil this whole experience. <laughs> anyway, I am super excited to read this book because I, like I said, I've heard nothing but great things about it. And it just sounds so interesting. I didn't even know that murder stuff was involved in this. Like I really did not know. Like I remember reading, okay, historical fiction and like whatever, whatever. I was slipping through the chapters and the chapters seemed very, very short. And it looks like it gives you different people's perspectives, but I'm super excited to read another historical fiction novel. And like I said, I'm just also really happy that I'm changing up the genres that I read so that I can like become a more well-rounded reader and not like stuck in my fantasy science fiction kind of ways. You know what I'm saying? So this wraps up all the books that I got from Barnes and Noble today. And I am super, super excited. All of these books have received such high praise lately. And I'm so excited to read all of them. And I just cannot wait. I cannot wait to see what happens in all of these books. Literally. I don't even know which one I want to read first. Like, I don't know what to do. I really don't know what to do. Anyway, that completely wraps up this video. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this book shopping vlog. If you enjoyed everything that you've seen today, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up to help support the channel. Subscribe for more videos. And if you're curious as to my everyday life and seeing what my life is like whenever I'm not reading, then you should subscribe to my new channel that I'll link in the description box below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video next week. Bye!